Okay, welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we're going to be doing a very basic TypeScript, uh, Node.js and Docker setup. So this is assuming you have some knowledge of Node.js um, and TypeScript. Um, probably if you're getting like, just getting into Docker and it's relatively new to you, this will be really helpful. Basically, one of the common problems I had when I was starting to play around with these technology stacks is getting TypeScript to work well with Docker in a development environment because if you don't know, with TypeScript you have to build the application. Uh, it's a compiled language, so getting that to work in a dev environment with Docker where you can actually be making changes in your code and having it hot reload in the actual Docker container so you can see the updates you're making in your application as you're building. Uh, it's pretty tough to figure out. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're doing a very, very simple TypeScript, TypeScript node and express application, uh, setting up a dev environment for Docker that will hot reload and watch for our changes, as well as setting up a production environment as well that uh, you can go ahead and deploy to anywhere that you'd like. Okay, so let's just get started. I'm just gonna make a directory for the project. CD into here. And the first thing we want to do is just create a blank slate uh, node project. So we can do that with npm init. And this will just walk us through creating a node project. Not really too worried about any of this right now, so I'm just going to kind of skip through it. It's all fine. Okay, and that's going to create a package.json for us. Uh, so the next thing that we need is to actually install TypeScript itself. And go npmi TypeScript. Save dev. We see it auto-completing some of these commands because I went through and built this beforehand. Okay. So now we'll be able to see TypeScript in our package.json. Um, TypeScript has a init function, which will create us a tsconfig file, which is gonna be really handy for us. Uh, to do that, you actually use npx. That's just tsc uh, dash dash init. So what that's gonna do is create us a tsconfig file. We can see that in there. And from here, I'm just gonna open this up in VS Code. Okay, so we can see we create our package.json, we have TypeScript installed, as well as we've generated this tsconfig file. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do is in this tsconfig file is tell it where to look for our source files. So I'm down here in base URL, we're going to create a folder. We're just going to call it .crc and we will create that in a second here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my target from ES, ES5 to ES next. Uh, and lastly, uh, there's a setting in here called module resolution. There it is, and we just wanna set that to node. Okay. Uh, so those are the basic settings we're going to need to get started. I'm also going to create that folder over here. This is where all of our source files are going to go, all of our TypeScript files. So uh, what's running development. Um, we compile everything in here to output JavaScript files, but we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, in here, I'm just going to create an index.ts file. And this is where I'm just going to import Express and start a very basic server. Um, we're not doing anything fancy here. I'm not really showing you how to build like advanced TypeScript applications, just how to get a Docker and dev environment set up. Uh, so for that, we're going to need Express. So I'm going to hop into my terminal here. I'm going to get that. Say npm i dash save express. And because we're using TypeScript, we also need the uh, TypeScript or the Express typings to be able to use that in our TypeScript project. So we're going to say npm i and dash d. This is going to install it as a dev dependency because we only want our 
TypeScript dependencies in development mode. Uh, when we build the TypeScript application, it all compiles to just regular JavaScript. We don't need all this stuff. Okay, so that's gonna let us use express in our TypeScript files. Um, so in this index.ts, I'm just going to import express from express. And down here, I'm gonna say const app equals express. And then I'm just gonna listen on a port. So if you've done any Node.js Express stuff, this should all be pretty familiar to you. And I'm just gonna do an arrow function in here. And we'll just log out uh, server. Server running. Four thousand. Oh, I have a typo there. Okay. Now, to be able to have hot reloading in development mode, we're going to need a couple things. Uh, the first thing is Nodemon. If you've used uh, Node.js before, that is pretty common. You're pretty familiar with it. We're also going to need TS Node so that we can run um, our Node application using TypeScript. So I'm going to go in and install those. And we want to install those as dev dependencies because we're not going to be using them on the production build or application. Okay. Now, we could include um, nodemon in our package.json uh, and like all the flags we're gonna need for it, but I like to actually just create a nodemon JSON file so I can keep my package.json as simple as possible. And in here, we can set some pretty basic settings that you run in development mode. So we're gonna say verbose. And a lot of this stuff is just for debugging purposes. Um, you can kind of look at the Nodemon documentation if you want a lot more, a little more info on this. Uh, the big ones that we're considered with for this project, though, is this watch setting. So we want to tell Nodemon to watch for the uh, files in our CRC directory. So we can go CRC. And what that is going to do, it's going to watch for all TypeScript files in our source directory. And then we also want to create something called an exec map. Ah, string quotations around that. So what we're going to do with this exec map parameter is tell Nodemon what to do with certain kinds of file types. So in our case, uh, we're using TypeScript files and we want to tell it node inspect. And this is just some debugging stuff that Nodemon offers. Inspect, I want to say no lazy. And then this is what is we're going to be really concerned with is this dash rts node slash register. Okay, so what is all this? Uh, we're telling Nodemon that when we have a TypeScript file, we want to run it with node. Uh, inspect no lazy is just some debugging stuff that Nodemon offers, but this dash rts node register, it's going to register ts node um, to run our Node.js application so that it can actually compile the TypeScript files because they're not just regular JavaScript files. So we're going to save that up. And then in our package.json, we're going to create a script for running in development mode. We're going to call it dev. 
And then here, uh, we're gonna use NodeMon to run the project. And we're going to point it at index.ts. Okay, so now we'll be able to start the project locally. We haven't got Docker or anything set up. We can run npm run dev in our terminal. And there you go, server running on port 4000. And if we go over to our index.ts, when we change this to 3000, no model will watch for file changes and it'll recompile our application. Okay, I'm just gonna change that back quickly. So now we also want to add a build script because like, remember what I said about TypeScript, it's compiled language. Um, so, well, it's a statically typed language. So it has to compile the TypeScript to spit out JavaScript to be able to actually run on the web. TypeScript doesn't run itself on the web, it has to be compiled to JavaScript. So for that, we'll go back into our TS config and find this setting here, output directory. This is the directory our compiled TypeScript is gonna be sent to, and we're just gonna call this build. Um, then back in our package.json, we can add a build script. And what we're gonna say here is we're just gonna use the TypeScript compiler, and to do that, we use the command tsc-p dot. And what this is going to do is compile our TypeScript, and it's gonna use, where is it here? The output directory that we've set in our TS config as the output directory for that compiled TypeScript. So if we go down in here, run npm run build, it's gonna run ts-p, and it's compile our TypeScript and output it into this build directory here. And you can actually see the compiled JavaScript from the TypeScript that we wrote. So that's good. Um, we also need a script to start our application. Start our application, this is like their production build, not for development. Um, so normally we would just say something here like node build, index.js and then we run npm start that's going to say server running on port 4000 but with our docker setup there's another thing we need to add in here we need to specify the node path so that it knows where to look for um, importing packages like as the base directory so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set node path. Like this will run fine right now, as you can see, it's running in the terminal. But for our Docker setup, we need to explicitly set the node path. We're gonna say dot slash build. So that when it has these imports in the compiled JavaScript, Docker knows that the base directory is the build directory for resolving these imports. Uh, this will be a little more clear once we get the Docker setup going. Okay, so that's it for the TypeScript side of things and getting our development and build scripts. Now we need to Dockerize this thing. So to do that, we're gonna add a Docker file. And it's gonna be pretty simple. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a node image. I'm just gonna use node 14, and I'm going to call this uh, base. So what you can do is you can um, use a multi-state build uh, to target different parts of it. So in this case, uh, this base step is gonna be what we run when we're running it in development mode, because we don't wanna compile our TypeScript um, and serve it in that production fold, in that build folder, when we're just running in development. And we're gonna have a different command for when we run in development, uh, our development script, than our uh, build and start scripts when we run in production. Okay, so first thing we wanna do, bring in that node image, set our working directory. 
and I'm just going to use, this is pretty arbitrary. This is gonna set the working directory in your Docker container. I'm just gonna use node slash home slash node slash app. Uh, you can kind of make that whatever you really want to. Uh, the next thing is we're gonna explicitly copy in our package.json. And you need to basically just explicitly copy in that package.json um, for whatever changes you make that you need to install into your container. Um, it's pretty common in every like starter uh, Docker setup. Um, you can look in the Docker documentation for more and like why you have to do this. Next thing we wanna do is run a command npm i. This is gonna install everything in our package.json. And then we're just going to simply run a copy command. What this does, copy dot dot, it copies everything in our local directory into the Docker container. So this is gonna copy all of our files in here into the Docker container. Okay, so that is gonna be our base setup. We're just setting our working directory, bringing in our package.json, installing it, bringing in all of our source files, and that is it. Um, we don't need to build the application or anything like that. Now for our production target, we're gonna say from base as production. So you can kind of think of this step as extending the base step. Uh, it's gonna run everything in base, but we're gonna to need to make some additional things in production mode as well. So. The first thing we're going to want to do here is run npm build. And that's going to compile our TypeScript and put it into that build folder in our container. Another thing we can do here is explicitly set our environment variables. So if we wanted to say something like environment node path equals dot slash build. Okay, that is it for the Docker file. Uh, you'll notice that there's no, if, you've, if you're familiar with Docker, there's no commands at the end of these to actually start the application. Uh, we're just going to use Docker Compose for that. So we'll create a Docker Compose file. First thing we need to do is specify what version we're gonna use. I'm just going to use 3.7. I think that's the latest one out right now. Could be wrong. And define some services. So services are just the containers that we want to run in our Docker Compose. I'm gonna call this one tsnode docker. Uh, we need a build step. Context is just where in the uh, in your directory uh, you want to find like your Docker file. Uh, in this case, it's just the current directory because uh, the Docker file is right here. Uh, you can specify the Docker file explicitly. Uh, you don't need to. I just like to. Uh, it makes it more readable for me. Uh, also, you can set uh, some indentation errors here. Fix those up. Okay, uh, the target, so in our Docker Compose, uh, we're just going to uh, run the development version of our Docker container. So we're gonna target the base, and that is in our Docker file over here. So we're targeting this step, we're not running the production step. We'll target base. And a few things we need in here um, to be able to enable hot reloading or something called volumes. I'm just gonna copy these in and kind of explain what they're doing because it's quite a bit to type out. So what volumes do in Docker is they just, they create, um, they create data that persists in your container. So you're actually using uh, the data from your like local directory. Uh, it's not being 
overwritten every single time you spin up the container. So it's gonna persist our source code as well as our node mon.json. This is like super important to be able to enable that hot reloading that we're talking about before. Another super common um, use of volumes is for persisting data in a database. Like if you're running in production or you don't want your data to be wiped in development mode every single time you spin it up. Uh, we're not setting up a database today, but that's probably one of the most common places that you find people using volumes. Okay, next thing I'm gonna explicitly set the container name, TS node docker. And I'm also going to expose a port. Uh, the port that we were running this on was port 4000. And you also have to map these ports. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna map the port that Docker is exposing to the port that our application is running on. So we'll say 4000, 4000. And lastly, we need a command to start our application. And we're just gonna use that command that we had in our package.json, uh, which is the dev script. So npm run dev. Okay, so we have our Docker file, uh, we have our base step as well as our production step, and we have our Docker composed for running our application in development mode. So the first thing we need to do, we can use Docker compose uh, build, and this is just going to build our image. Uh, you have to build your image before you run it. Um, if you're new to Docker, that's just, yeah, what you gotta do. So that's gonna build our TS node. Oh, and we have an error here. Let's take a look here. Ah, that is not the right Docker file. Okay. Build TS node Docker. So you're gonna see every step that it's taking in our Docker file. So it's bringing in that node image, setting our working directory, uh, copying in packages.json, installing, and there you go, uh, copying in the rest of our source code and our image is successfully built. Now we can run this. Uh, so docker compose up, what this is gonna do is it's gonna look for our docker compose.yaml by default, just by the naming convention, and it's going to execute everything in here using our docker file. So it's gonna use our Docker file, it's gonna create these volumes, it's gonna uh, create a container, expose these ports, and then run our command. And this dash D is just gonna run it in the background so that it uh, like runs silently, it doesn't have to stay up in our terminal. Docker compose up, creating network, creating KS on no, no Docker, done. Okay, so that worked. Um, one thing I should have mentioned at the start of this tutorial is I just kind of assumed that you would have Docker installed on your computer. If you don't have Docker installed, you need to do that. Uh, just go to their website and download it. Another thing you can do is install the Docker desktop app. So let's pull it up here. Docker desktop. Head over here to Docker desktop for Mac and Windows. Download it for, yeah, whatever you're using. Uh, Linux, Windows, Mac, whatever. So download that. That's what I like to use so I don't have to run it in my terminal. And then what you can do is just pull up their desktop app and actually see whatever containers that you have running. So right here we can see our TS node Docker and we can actually go in here and see server running on port 4000. And now if we go back into our application code, this, the changes we make should be picked up in our Docker container. So if we change this to server running on port 3000, and go back into our Docker container, you can see restarting due to changes, it restarts your application and now it's running on port 3000. So we have our Docker container running in development mode, picking up our changes. So as we're actually coding out our application, we can be hot reloading it in the Docker container, replicating exactly what that production, production environment is gonna look like. Uh, so we don't have to build our stuff locally and then just, you know, make, hope it builds on the Docker container. We can do it all while we're developing. Cool, so that works. I'm just gonna change this back to port 4000. Oops. 
And then I'm just going to uh, stop this container quickly. Uh, that's what I love about the desktop app. You can just quickly go back here, stop it. Now we need to get our production version of Docker up. So you can create multiple uh, Docker Compose files. Uh, I'm going to create one here called docker-compose.prod.yaml. And what we're basically going to do is this docker-compose.prod is going to override a few of the commands we have in our base Docker Compose. So you can think of this sort of as our like base Docker Compose and we use this Docker Compose prod to override any of these commands that we want to run in different environments. So we can override this command here, npm run dev, run dev to like build and start our application. And that's, that's essentially what we're going to do. So in our Docker Compose prod, uh, again, we want to use the same version 3.7. And we're just going to override a few of the things in our services here. So for a TS node, Docker, we want to override build command. And if you look in our Docker compose.yaml, I mean, I can actually just put these side by side. Okay. So this is our base Docker compose.yaml and we're targeting the base. So in our Docker file, this is what we are targeting right here. But in production, we want to target this guy here. So when we target production, it's gonna run everything in base, but it's also going to set our environment variable and it's gonna run npm run build to actually build our application. So if we go back to docker-compose.prod and set the target here to production. We also want to override this command, npm run dev. Sure, indentation is good there. And instead of npm run, dev, run dev, we want to say node build index.js. Save that up. So when we run our docker compose.prod, it is going to run everything in base, run everything in production. It's going to build our application. And then after that's all done, it's going to run node build index.js to actually start our built application in production. Okay, so what we can do um, to start our application with that uh, docker compose.prod is we can say docker compose and set this F flag to specify what files we want to use. So we want our Docker Compose because that has all of our, all the stuff that we want to keep in there, our base Docker Compose. So it's telling us what Docker file, it's setting the volumes, the container name, exposing ports, but we want to override everything in here that's um, set in our Docker Compose.prod. So to override everything with another file, we can set another F flag and say docker compose dot yaml up dash d. So what this is saying is docker compose use docker compose dot yaml, but then um, everything in docker compose dot prod that's uh, set is going to override those commands uh, in this file docker compose here. Ah, okay, I had a typo there. Don't want that up command at the beginning. Ah, another typo. Sorry, guys. Okay, that should work. So that's gonna create our TS node Docker container, and we'll be able to see that in our desktop app. And if we go into TS node Docker, we can see server running on port 4000. And we can go in here and inspect, you can, there's 
like a lot of stuff you can use with the desktop app. But what this is doing is it's running in production. So this isn't going to pick up our hot reloading. So if we go into our index.js, and let's get rid of this. And we change this server running on port 3000. Oh, sorry. Don't want to do it in the build folder. We want to do it in index.ts. Change this server running on port 3000. Our Docker container isn't going to pick that up because this is running the built application, the JavaScript files. It's running everything in here. It's building it and starting it. It's not uh, running the development version of TypeScript. So there we have it. We have our development environment set up and our production environment set up. Uh, the last thing I want to do is, like you saw how many typos I made doing all those Docker Compose steps, and it's quite time consuming. I want to create a make file so I can map some common Docker commands to uh, like easier to run commands from my terminal. Uh, so I'm going to stop that container with Docker Compose down. Stopping TS node Docker. Wait for that to finish up. Sometimes it takes a minute. Okay, cool. So I'm going to create a make file here. These things are super handy uh, when you have like more complex uh, Docker setups going on because we can just map commands to like more complicated ones. So for up, you want to say Docker compose up dash D. So now from our command line, if we want to run our application in development mode, we all we have to do is say make See, it creates TS node Docker. Go into our desktop app, find it running on port 4000, and this is running the development version of our container. So you can see it's running on port 4000. It's watching our files, so we can still like go ahead and make changes, and it'll register those. Okay, cool. Another common one that I keep on having to run is uh, Docker compose down. So I'm gonna create that. down. So now if I want to stop my containers, all I have to run is make down. And I'll stop my containers. Uh, the other one that I kept on screwing up on was the production build. So I'm just going to call this a prod. And I'm going to copy that command in. So now if I run make a prod, this will actually build our application and serve out the built JavaScript files. And we can see server running on port 4000. Oh, I should also add a dash D to the end of this so that it runs silently. Stop the container, it's gonna take a second. Okay, there we go. So now if we're gonna make a prod again, this should run silently in the background. And there we go. And if we pull up our desktop app, TS node Docker, we can see a server started on port 4000. Now this is in develop or in production mode, sorry, so it won't pick up the changes made in our TypeScript files. It's the built version of our application. I'm just gonna take that down. Okay, so that is it for this tutorial. Um, I hope this helped you guys out uh, starting to use TypeScript with Docker a lot and there's not a lot of documentation on it. It'd be pretty hard to set up a development environment. Um, this is pretty bare bones. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can do with this. Like you could add a database to your Docker file and get that hooked up in your network as well. Um, another thing you can do is include test files in here um, and create a test runner. Um, I'm thinking about um, kind of extending this uh, tutorial into another video like that. Um, let me know in the comments, like any feedback. Uh, I don't make tutorials too often, so it's nice to know if there's you know better ways to go about this. Um, just any feedback is is welcome, good or bad. And uh, yeah, if you guys would like to like see sort of a like part two on this, sort of how to link up a database or how to set up a test runner, um, I'd be you know happy to do that too. Um, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thanks for checking it out, sticking around this long, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.